Another thing is to set alarms. So I grabbed the alarms off my trading desk and this one's near the open. And you'd be surprised how many times you'll completely miss the open if you don't have an alarm to wake you up and let you know that, hey, I need to watch this open. And at 825, which is five minutes before the market opens, that's when I check for opening gap reversals. More often than not, there's no opening gap reversals, or as we now call them, ogres, to trade. But that's my heads up. Hey, you got five minutes for the open. Check your ogres. Check a million little things. Check your spreadsheet. Check your plan for the day. You need to add those into a million little things, right? So let's say it's Friday and I have some futures on, or it would be less common, but maybe I have some stock that I need to get out of in after hours or an ETF or something that I forgot to get out of or didn't have enough time to get out. I'll set an alarm so I can get out before the after hours trading closes. Now at 240, I have what I call my ES240 strategy. And I haven't fleshed it out, so I'm not hiding anything that's proprietary or secret from you. It's just an observation. And it's a grind. The, the, what I found is right around that 240, in about 245, they stopped taking orders for the zero DTE E-mini options. I don't look at those E-mini options at all until 20 minutes before the close. And what you're going to find is 10 or 15 points out from where you are, those options sometimes could be really cheap. Now, some days you probably don't want to buy them because the market is just not moving at all. But there's other days where maybe the market is going in one direction, a little overbought, oversold, whatever the case may be, and you can play those options. And sometimes you can play both sides relatively cheaply. And when I'm talking cheap, I'm talking cheap, like $10, $15 an option. No, I'm sorry, even less than that, maybe like uh, $7.50 an option, literally $7.50. Now, these are out of the money. They're lottery tickets. They're, they're likely, more than likely, expire worthless. But I'll put in an order for a two times on these. And again, I have this is kind of a half baked strategy at this point in time. And it's like you lose, 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 bam, you hit it out the park. And then you lose, 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 lose. So it's psychologically, it's kind of a hard strategy. You almost have to see, your, just see yourself as kind of pissing the money away when you do it. And I'm kind of nickel and dime in this. I'm not putting a lot of money into it. And I don't recommend you either until I flesh it out, until at least I flesh it out a little bit more, or maybe you figure it out or see if there's something something there. The secret sauce, I think, is maybe there's a, a filter or something. And, and right now, it's just kind of feel like, okay, I think this market can easily move 10 points. It doesn't have to go in the money. It just has to go far enough for me to get a double. And then I've take off half of those contracts with a limit order. And every now and then, and not that often, again, I don't want to sell you on this uh, because it, it, it is kind of a dangerous thing. But every now and then I'll have one go into money. And that's when you really get paid. You'll get paid like 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 on these silly little contracts. But anyway, that's why that alarm is set. There's been many, many days since I've been watching those where, it, and I know, what would the world be without hypothetical questions, but it seems, or without hypotheticals, it seems like on some of those days, I completely forgot it would have been the mother of all opportunities. The S&P futures ripped 20 or 30 points in those last 20 minutes. But anyway, it's something I haven't fleshed out. I'd love to talk with somebody who understands options, and uh, maybe I'm out in left field on this, and and I haven't tracked my performance here in a while. It's like it, you can tell that I haven't been doing well. And it's like whenever I knock it out the park, then I start tracking the performance again to uh, to see if it's all worthwhile. But it's nickel and dime stuff. I know it can add up. You can't get a little bit pregnant. So don't beat me up too much on that. But I, th I think there's something there. I just haven't completely figured it out. But anyway, long story endless. That's why I set that alarm. 2.55 my time. I'm on central time is five minutes before the close so that wakes me up okay what do i have to close out what are my positions and every now and then this is another one of those dangerous things that i don't want to sell you on this but every now and then right around the close today didn't work but you know, i didn't do anything believe me but let's say today that the semiconductors were a route one day uh one way all day long okay the shorts let's say the semiconductors just absolutely imploded all day nvidia hit its earnings and then absolutely imploded or whatever happens 
then like right towards the close, you might have some short covering or something. And I call it the race to the finish. And those last five minutes, sometimes you could put on a trade, fairly low risk trade and hold them for a couple of minutes going into the close. And, and again, it's nothing that I'm going to write about or talk about and suggest you do, but it's just up to an observation you might want to check out. Um, I used to have this 230 set. Now I have enough time usually when I'm doing this ES240. I probably should turn this alarm back on, but this is when I would do my IPO analysis. And I, I probably will turn that back on because there, there are days where I forget to do my IPO analysis. 